Good evening. I am Dr. Matthew Koshimunekar, the Honorary Director of the Ecological Department of Church of South India. We cordially welcome all the students and teachers attending this program. Today, we are having a guest, Bishop Uman George, Bishop Titor and Dr. Uman George, is the Bishop of Kollangkota Rekara Diocese. He will bless the program. Then we will go to the routine program. I cordially welcome Bishop Uman George to lead us in prayer and bless the program. First of all, I thank God for this wonderful opportunity to inaugurate this program and bless this program. Professor Dr. Matthew Koshi, he is the honorary director of Synod Ecological Department. He is hardworking director in the CSI Synod. So the ecological department is really a vibrant department in the Synod. So I thank God for his wonderful service to the Senate. One of his vision is to motivate the children, especially the CSI children. In 24 dioceses, our churches, most of the churches are in rural areas. Whether in rural or urban, his aim and goal to motivate the children, the youngsters, especially the uh, uh, children who are studying in uh, 8th to 11th standard. It's the peak time of uh, the students. 8th to 11th standard is the really molding, shaping time of a student. So, I ask to the children, please obey. Please, whatever you receive through this program, through your instructors or uh, uh, motivation leaders, whatever they say, we accept and try to uh, activate in your daily life. Uh, in a, in the circumstances, we are uh, hearing and uh, uh, in the midst of negative energies. We all are in negative energies through different kinds of uh, medias. But this is the best time for to get positive energy. To get the positive energy is only through the word of God and the blessings of the God Almighty. You never ever get such blessings from anywhere. The wisdom and knowledge is the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you need, all of you need the gift of the Holy Spirit. What of wisdom and knowledge is the first two gift of the Holy Spirit. So I inaugurate this program in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Father, thank you for this wonderful day and wonderful time to inaugurate the CSI Senior Ecological Program for the students, those who are studying in 8th to 11th standard. Lord, thank you for our children from different dioceses, especially in India, we have uh, 24 dioceses, including Jaffna. The students from 23 dioceses join in this program. I pray for the director and those who are working on it, those who give motivation classes, those who join in this program. Lord, you please bless this program. Lord, this program 
must be a great blessing those who are working hard for their uh, future especially we have a goal and a dream about our children our children must be the best in the world csi children must be the best the best in the world so we try our best to encourage and motivate such children lord you please you sent your mighty holy spirit upon the children and bless them abundantly give them more, more wisdom and knowledge to do something for the expansion of the kingdom of god through various activities yes lord we believe you are going to do that miracle thank you for this wonderful night thank you for this wonderful time we praise you and glorify you master god you are in this world you bless the children hug the children and kiss the children the same spirit is still alive so please send your mighty blessings upon this children and bless this children we give all the honor and glory to you in jesus precious name we pray amen, amen. and amen thank you tirumanni for your inspiring words and prayer we cordially welcome all the students teachers for the second batch of leadership training program 150 students attended our first batch and 12 teachers took classes for them it was well appreciated by the students and teachers a teacher from your diocese will help you as a mentor teacher will form a whatsapp group of the students and give you necessary instructions i hope the teachers will check how many students from your diocese join in today's session today today we need people from with competence if you are expert in any topic then people will come to you to get your expert opinion we know that the students are not aware of the career opportunities available in our country we would like to introduce to you the opportunities available in our country we got eminent personalities to take classes today i have invited rubel raj he was a teacher in st thomas college kolanjeri then he was an english professor in st berkman's college chennai then he became the principal of marian college kutikanam he is a, a regular writer he is a good orator so he will be dealing today's class he is giving an orientation for the students how to utilize this opportunity maximum so sir on behalf of csi students csi department of ecological concerns i cordially welcome you to this program i welcome all the teachers who are coordinating the program and all the students attending this program i hope this program will be a useful program to all the students of csi so i cordially invite rubel raj sir to take the class very respected excellency my close friend dr matthew koshi esteemed teachers parents and my very very dear students at the very outset let me express my sincere gratitude to the csi charge and especially my friend dr matthew koshi for inviting me as the resource person for the second 
edition of this program. I fully appreciate the great efforts taken by the CSI Church, as well as Dr. Matthew Koshi and all the other teachers from teachers and Reverend Fathers from various dioceses in organizing a program of this nature. My request to my young friends is this. You need to mute your audio as well as video and just listen to what I am telling. And whenever I'm asking you some questions, sometimes you can use the chat box to answer. But at the end, we will have some open time too. I'm sure you all have heard about the term that has been constantly using by the church in India and elsewhere. That is church building. It's a very familiar term, a very common term, known to all the people associated with church activities. Church building is the term. When we use the term church building, we denote the spiritual strengthening of the church, the liturgical strengthening of the church, and the biblical strengthening of the church. When we say church building, we are not denoting the building of the church. It is strengthening the church spiritually, liturgically, and biblically. Today, or these days, CSI Department for Ecological Concerns, they have come out with another initiative that is motivating the youngsters as well as the students. I would say this is also church building. We need to build the church socially. When I say the church, I, I say I mean the members of the church. They must be made socially committed people. They must be strengthened culturally also. That means they must get good education, quality education, and they must make use of the education that they receive. That is another facet of church building. And that is what this particular department is trying to do. I see some faces here and there, only very few faces, but a lot of names are there on my screen. I know fully well that the face that I see on the screen or the names that appear on the screen, that is your name, your face, that is going to be the face of the CSI church in the next 10 years. That means the CSI church in the next 10 years will be known after you, after you people. That means your face is the face of the CSI church in the next 10 years. I'm sure that the organizers have realized this. That is why they are conducting a program like this. Let us slowly enter into our topic. Let me begin by asking you a question. What is the greatest debacle or failure, whatever it is, failure in one's life? 
Maybe you can use the chat box and give your own answers. To you, what is the greatest failure in one's life? What is that? Yeah. You can try. You can try, yeah. Losing something you like. Okay, very good. Giving up. Very good. Not achieving our goal. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Nishida. Not, yeah. To go back from our goal, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not planning properly. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Fearness. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Living without goal, fine. All are correct answers. I appreciate your answers. And these are very good answers. Acceptable answers. We have lack of time. That's why I'm not concentrating on your answers now. Some people say, as you said, that the greatest debacle in one's life is the financial crunch that I'm facing today. I don't have money for my needs. Some people say like that. Some people say I have a lot of ailments, diseases, ailments, and that is the debacle in my life. Some will say that it is nothing but shattered dreams that can be uh, my failure, or that is my failure, that is my debacle. And to that, I very humbly add all the answers given by the participants. Mm? I appreciate your answers. But I would like to look at it from another perspective, another angle. I would say that the greatest debacle in one's life is the gap between your achievement and the possible achievement. What is that? I'll repeat. The greatest debacle in one's life is the gap between your achievement and your possible achievement. What do I mean by that? Maybe you could have come up to this level you could have grown up to this level. But unfortunately, you have grown up only up to this level. This gap, the gap between your achievement and the possible achievement, that is a great debacle in one's life. This can happen because of various reasons. And one reason is that there was nobody to energize you. There was nobody to charge you. When His Excellency Bishop Uman George was addressing you, he told us about negativism around, lot of negative people around. They are freely available everywhere, everywhere. At home they are, maybe near home they are, in your classes they are, everywhere there are a lot of negative people. And you have only very few people to charge you or to strengthen you. CSI Church has realized it. That is why they have come out with a program like this. They want to charge you positively so that you will achieve all that you could achieve. That is the point. I'll repeat. CSI Church, the CSI Church has come out with this kind of a program because they want to make their students, the students of CSI Church, to achieve all that they could achieve. That means you must grow according to your potential. You must grow according to your work. And for that, Sometimes you need a push, sometimes a pull, sometimes extending a helping hand. This program is for that. It is to give you a push, it is to give you a pull, or it is to extend to you a helping hand. That is the importance of this program. I remember the fate of one of my classmates. I don't want to mention his name. 
This boy was extremely intelligent in mathematics, extremely intelligent. When he comes to the first class, when he was standard, standard eight, he was with me from standard eight on. He was, I told you, he was very good in mathematics. He will do all the problems in the textbook on the very first day, imagine, on the very first day. And he has got a very beautiful handwriting. And his books are very neat and tidy. He will do all the problems in the mathematics text. And he will appear on the very first day. People like me, who were very poor in mathematics. And that was our reference book. Right? Whenever homeworks were given, the reference was Jayakumar's notebook. When he came to standard nine, he repeated the same. All the answers from the very first day. He came to standard 10, did the same. All the answers on the very first day. He had nothing to study in, in the class. Nothing to study. He was reading something because he knows everything in mathematics, especially in mathematics. We all thought that Jay Kumar will become an IIT product. He will get into maybe a top-notch engineering college in the country. He will be a technocrat. But then, unfortunately, Jay Kumar didn't become so. He joined a private institution as a clerk. After some time, he grew into an upper division clerk. And then he became a superant and he retired. A boy who could have been in the IIT, who could have contributed much to society, maybe as, an, as a mathematics teacher, maybe as a mathematics researcher, maybe as something else, as a coding expert, he ended up as what? As a superant of a private firm. Why? Because there were, there were not, he was not having people around him to push him, to pull him, and to extend the helping hand. So he was simply freely enjoying his life during his college. And then he couldn't become all that he could become. He couldn't become all that he could become. That is the greatest debacle in one's life. You take it from me. So the whole CSI church has faith in you. They have trust in you. They pin great hope in you. For what? That in 10 years, 10 years, you must be in very good positions, very good positions, doing well, performing well, and performing as a Christian. You may be a teacher, okay, Christian teacher. You may be a government servant, okay, a Christian government servant. I'm not saying that he must become orthodox, no. A government servant upholding Christian values. A collector upholding Christian values a judge or an advocate or maybe a magistrate upholding Christian values, a civil servant upholding Christian values, nothing else. The church wants you to be placed in those levels. That is why uh, the CSI church has organized a program like this. I think it is my thinking. I don't know whether you will agree with that or not. I think that the greatest gift that we have received from God, the creator, is the gift of life. God gave us life. God created us. That is the greatest gift that we have received from God. Since we have received the gift from God, we need to give him something in return. What is that? The money we put in the offer tree, the contributions that we give to the church, the donations that we give to the church, 
maybe the humanitarian work of which you are a part of no it can be that but i would say since we all have received the greatest gift of life from god the creator in return we should give god a gift that is nothing but a fulfilled life a fulfilled life a life which has come to that level by using all your potential and talents that is what i call a fulfilled life the csi church wants to give to god the fulfilled life of its youngsters that is why they have come out with this kind of a program i have read somewhere that god has designed us to succeed i don't think that god has this kind of a thinking that so and so must fail in his life since he is god the creator god the almighty the kind and compassionate almighty it is his design that all his children must succeed but then why is it that many are failing god has designed us to succeed but we decide to fail we decide to fail we through our actions through our laziness through our thirst for happiness lesser pleasure because of all that we are not able to concentrate in our studies properly we miss many classes we don't show interest in the lessons we don't show interest in studies we are more interested in external matters and so we decide to fail god has designed us to succeed but we decide to fail the csi church has come out with a thinking with a decision that their children must not decide to fail their children must not fail they won't be allowed to fail the church will be with them to strengthen them to charge them Hmm? to recharge them that is the importance of this program no doubt we are leading our life you lead your life and i lead my life but then it happens nowadays that our life is being dictated by many others around us for example friends nowadays friends are everything for our children it is good that you have friends you need to have good friends no doubt about it you need to have friends as well as good friends but then you must not allow them to decide your life now your life is being dictated by him your life is being decided by him your decisions are at the lower strata and his decisions are in the upper strata he decides everything no you must decide your life you must decide you must decide your destiny you must decide your future you must decide your dream you must decide your aspirations goals the church is telling that we are with you for that we are with you that is why we are conducting we have come out with this kind of a program i have told you that we decide to fail and there are lot of things that prevent us from succeeding in our life there are lot of lot of factors that prevents us become uh, becoming successful lot of factors are there i would like to look at it from a very interesting point of view what are the main reason or what is the main reason for our non performance i repeat what is the main reason for our non performance 
I am sure nowadays youngsters are very smart. Technically, you are very smart people. You easily adapt yourself to technology. Any new technology within no days, uh, within no no time, you will adapt to it. So you are very smart people. The millennials are very smart people, very smart people, very intelligent, very brainy people. But then there are lots of people who are not performing up to the level they could perform. You could perform more, you could perform better, but then you are not performing. So the question is, what is the main reason for our non-performance? I would like to center it around only one point, only one point. There may be hundreds of points, but then for today's class, I am centralizing, concentrating on only one point. What is the reason for our non-performance? Only one point. The point is that our excuses. We are not performing to the level that we could perform. We are not going to the heights that we could go. We are not reaching the dream that we could achieve or we could think of. Mainly because of one reason, excuses. E-X-C-U-S-E-S, excuses. And let us see, what are the excuses that we see? What are the excuses? You all come out with a lot of excuses, I know. I'm sure. You know, I am a teacher, as Dr. Matthew Koshi put it. I was uh, an English teacher in two reputed colleges. Later, fortunately, because of the grace of God, I became a principal. Whether I was a teacher or a principal, or whatever it is, I had great importance to. It important I never tolerate latecomers in the class. But then there are some students late. Oh my God, you ask them, why are you late? They will come out with hundreds of excuses. Number one, I didn't get up in the morning. I was late in going to bed. Nobody woke me up. I missed the best. The dress was not properly and so on and so forth. You know, they'll count with any number of excuses. Any number of excuses. I would like to limit it to six excuses. You must write it down. You must write it down. Maybe uh, there will be an examination at the end of the whole program, and then you will get questions from this area too. So the point that I have highlighted is this. The main reason for our non-performance is the excuses that we see. And let us see the excuses that we see. Number one, number one, intelligence excuse. What is that? The first excuse that we say is intelligence excuse. I am not a bright boy. I am not a talented boy. I am not an intelligent boy. So on and so forth. Right? That is one excuse. My parents are not that much educated. My parent is not. My father is not a college professor. My mother is not a teacher. They are very ordinary people. So they, they are not very intelligent. So I am not intelligent. So you come out with this kind of excuse. So the first excuse is intelligence excuse. But my question is, are you making maximum use of the intelligence that you have? Are you making maximum use of the intelligence that you possess? There are variations in the, in the level of intelligence that you have. There are, there are, there are. But are we making maximum use of the intelligence that we possess? That is my request to my youngsters. Make maximum use of the intelligence that you possess. Maximum use of the intelligence that you possess. So the first excuse is intelligence excuse. 
second one luck escapes yeah yeah it is poor network that that message has come to me uh, you will have to bear with me because you know i live in a village uh, where normally uh, such campaigns will be there but let us see uh, i am getting its full signal that sign is there but maybe in between uh, it goes i am sorry for that but let us see let us see so the second excuse that we say is luck excuse l u c k luck excuse i'm not lucky i'm not lucky what to do my parents were not lucky my whole family is not a lucky lucky family what to do i'm not lucky i don't have this i don't have that right i, I don't have the facility i'm not lucky but i would like to tell my youngsters that you are the people to bring luck to your family you are the people to bring luck to your church your parish your diocese to the state to the nation right you must bring luck through your systematic hard work through your hard work yes very good through your hard work i would say systematic hard work system there must be a definite goal and then you work for the goal there is a system there is a method method so what i would like to say is this don't think that luck is something outside you i would say you are the luck to your family you are the luck of your parents the parish the diocese the state the nation so there is no point in simply saying luck is key third excuse money is key money m o n e y money is key i don't have money with me my parents are very ordinary people very poor people i don't have money my father is not having any bank balance right he is not having any bank balance mother is not having any bank balance we are not living in a palatial building so on and so forth i don't have money i should have been born in that family where there is kundiya pai i would say that you are the person to bring luck and money to your family you are the person to bring luck and money to your family so don't simply save yourself by saying i don't have luck i don't have money fourth one health excuse h e a l t h health excuse health excuse normally many people say the moment i open my book i feel sleepy i feel headache the moment i enter the school oh my gosh oh headache I sit in the class headache i am not able to concentrate properly if i sit i have back ache if i stand i have leg ache it's all health problems what to do what to do right i have migraine i have eosinophilia i have cough right lot of issues headache that's very common i would say that if we have a real health problem consult a doctor and sort it out there can be health problems no doubt there can be you consult a good doctor a, a proficient doctor and sort it out there is no point in simply uh, uh, saying health is fifth one problem is problem i'll repeat intelligence excuse luck excuse money excuse health excuse and now problem excuse oh my god i can't stand because there are a lot of problems at home lot of problems my father and mother they are always quarreling my elder sister is fighting with me elder brother is fighting with me my younger one is fighting with me. 
there are problems around problems in the family relationship problems communication problems all that there are problems i would say that till your death till your last breath till our last breath there will be problems there will be no doubt don't expect a life without problems if it is life there will be problems but i would request my young ones young friends like this never allow the problems to conquer you never allow never grant the permission to problems to conquer you because when you are being conquered by the problems when problems conquer you problems are succeeding and you are failing right problems succeed and you fail never allow that never allow that i will not allow problems to supersede me to defeat me i know one of my students uh, yes they are not in sir yeah i know one of my students coming from a very 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 poor family father is a coconut plucker you know what it is coconut plucker mother is the housemaid huh? housemaid and his father fell down from the coconut broke his uh, back and then he is almost paralyzed so they don't have any income mother is doing some work and then she is gaining something and this guy that my student he was with me in the college one day had a chat with him i asked him he was doing his graduation economics i asked him what's your plan after completing graduation then uh, at that time that point of time he was in the second year of study i asked him what's your plan he told me um when i come to the final year i will join for public service commission kochi that is the it's kochi and while i complete my graduation i will appear for psc exams i will try to get into the police department or make it back. do that suppose i'm not making it i'll continue my studies i'll join for post graduation um like that he was then i was very happy see a boy from a very 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 poor background a boy with all his all his limitations and this boy is having clear 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 goals he has lot of problems he had lot of problems but then he is not allowing the problems to conquer him when you allow the problems to conquer you problems are going to succeed and you are to fail okay so never allow the problems to conquer you sixth one as well as the last one we will have a recap which are the excuses that we say number 1 you can type there number 1 somebody yeah use the chat box yeah use the chat box yeah intelligence excuse second one second one intelligence excuse ah uh, luck excuse very good third one third one ah uh, luck money excuse very good money excuse next one next health excuse very good next one problem is very good very good, very good. and the last one sixth one it is the other person excuse hmm? the other person excuse what is that i am not able to study because you know i am not able to concentrate because of my relationship with that boy that girl 
I'm always thinking about that boy, that boy. What? What to do? I want to study, but then that person is not allowing me to study. It is good to have friendship. It is good to have friendship. Healthy friendship with the opposite sex, no doubt. You need to have it. But then, when that is affecting your concentration, you need to control that. You need to limit that. So don't say, I, am, I want to study, I'm willing to study, but then the other person, the other boy, the other girl is not permitting me to study. What kind of an excuse is that? So we must stop saying all these excuses. Right? I have given you six excuses. We will recap it. Number one, intelligence excuse. Number two, luck excuse. Number three, money excuse. Number four, health excuse. Number five, problem excuse. And number six, the other person excuse. So these are the reasons for our non-performance. Mm -hmm. That is the point you need to keep in our mind. Then, what is the point in knowing all these excuses? Mm -hmm. It's only for study purpose. What is the way out of these excuses? Right? We need to say no to these excuses. We need to overcome these excuses. We need to defeat these excuses. We need to stop saying these excuses. What is the way out? I would say we need to identify our capital, then we will stop saying excuses. I repeat. In order to stop saying excuses, we need to identify our capital, C-A-P-I-T-A-L, capital. You know what capital is. We need to identify our capital. Then, which are the capitals? Naturally, you will say money, right? right? Money is a capital because your economics teacher has taught you that money or wealth is a capital. Okay. But I would say, for study purpose, for today's study purpose, I would say, that I'm not going to consider money as capital today. Because the problem with money is that it will not remain with our forever. It will not remain with us forever. A person who is very wealthy today need not be a wealthy person tomorrow. You know about the Ambani's, the brother Ambani. He was a wealthy man, but now today no. That can happen to anybody, anybody. So for today's study purpose, we are not regarding wealth or money as the capital. Only for today. Hmm? Only for today. Hmm? Only for this study purpose. So that cannot be treated. We are not accepting that as a capital. Second one, social capital. But you must know all these capitals. Number one, economic capital. Write down hmm? our capitals. Economic, E-C-O-N-O-M-I-C, -E economic capital, write down. Put a small into mark there, hmm? an into mark. Economic capital, a small into mark. Okay, second one, social capital. Social capital. That is the name of your family, the status of your family, right? The social positioning of your family the wealth of your family, everything, your social position, right? I don't think that that will also remain forever. I know about a family, my uh, neighbor. These are all, the, all our childhood members, part of childhood members. That family was in those days, in the 1960s, 1960s. That family was having five elephants. Five elephants. And nowadays you don't know the worth of an elephant. Maybe suppose I tell you that family had five JCBs and Taurus and all that. You may be, uh, you may know it, what it is. So they had five elephants. Having one elephant in those days was a great social position. And this family was having five elephants in those days. See? So, the people of that family were known as 
people of the family were their elephant part right so they were known by that name yeah that family they got elephants so this boy is from that house where they are having five elephants that was the talk but if you come to my place now and then ask for this family having five elephants people will say oh, who was having five elephants here nobody no no that family was having five elephants. no 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 don't say that never 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 it was not there no no somebody told me that you know that family has no 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 simply they are they are simply bluffing nobody will believe it because they lost everything they lost everything if you are constantly striving to maintain the social position not constantly trying to maintain the social positioning it will not remain it will wane it will end so put a small into mark there hmm? social capital so i have taught you two capitals one economic capital and two social capital three symbolic capital symbolic s y m b o l i c symbolic capital symbolic capital what is that within brackets you write beauty smartness hmm? your beauty and smartness are your symbolic capital but again the problem is that you know the beauty and smartness will not remain with us forever it will wane naturally as you grow old it will wane maybe something because of sickness it can go down because of physical disability maybe your all your smartness will go sometime so that cannot be called a capital right for our study purpose study purpose put a small into mark there a small into mark so i have taught you three capitals and i have told you that we are not regarding these capitals today which are the capitals number 1 economic capital that is money second one social capital very good and third one symbolic capital okay yeah okay so three capitals and the last one the fourth one the most important one that is culture c u l t u r e culture within brackets you write education culture within brackets you write education Hmm? education hmm. i would say that this capital that is education education it is the greatest capital that you can possess it is the biggest capital that you can possess because it will bring in all the other capital if you have education right that education will bring in economic capital social capital and symbolic capital what is that imagine that hmm, after completing your graduation and post graduation or maybe after completing your graduation you try for civil service you need to try mr koshi has promised that uh, teachers will tell you which are the opportunities available uh, for you so you become you you, you get in the civil service and you become a collector of your locality imagine that collector of a district right you simply imagine that you become the collector of your home district okay naturally you will be as a collector you will get very good salary right a decent salary money will come to you hmm? good money will come to you no doubt decent money will come to you white money will come to you not black money white money will come to you so naturally economic capital capital second one social capital when you become the collector of your hometown the position of your family the worth of your family will go up for oh, it is collector's family right your father will be called as what nobody will call your father his name he will be called as what collector's father nobody knows about your mother's about your mother and mother's name but she will be called as what collector's mother collector's brother collector's sister collector's parish collector's church right your social position will go when you are well employed well placed no doubt 
your social positioning will go up. So you are getting the sec second capital. Third one, your beauty and smartness. Naturally, the position will give you beauty. The position will give you a chance, no doubt. You are sitting in the collector's chair. You are sitting in the ambassador's chair. You are sitting in the officer's chair. That position, that position will bring you charm, smartness. So once you are educated and once you are well placed, that will bring you all the other capitals. It will fetch you money. It will strengthen your social positioning. It will bring you smartness and beauty. So which is the most important capital? Which is the most important capital? Okay, culture. And by culture, we mean what? Education. Very good. Very good. By culture, we mean education. So, you must be interested in education. All the students must be interested in education because that is the greatest asset that you have, the greatest wealth that you have, which can bring in all other capital. So, you must know the importance of uh, education. Nelson, Mand Nelson Mandela is a name that is familiar to you. He said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Don't think that the weapons, the most modern weapons, the nuclear weapons that can change the world. No, that can destroy the world. It cannot change the world. But through education, Nelson Mandela is telling, through education, you can change the face of the world. That is what Nelson Mandela said. You know about that young girl, Malala Yousafzai. She said, one book, one pen, one teacher can change the world. So education first. One book, one pen, one teacher can change the world. The whole world can be changed by changed through education. So most important one, education. You got it? So you must be interested in education. When we uh, look into the Bible, I'm sure you read Bible daily. There is a beautiful book in the Bible called Proverbs. You know what Proverb is. Proverb chapter 3, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. I'll read it out and then I'll explain. Happy are those who find wisdom. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who get understanding. For her, for income is better than silver and her revenue better than gold. The income that you receive from wisdom is better than silver and revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Wisdom is more precious than jewels. And nothing you can desire can compare with her. No comparison with anything. Wisdom has no comparison with anything. She has life in her right hand and in left hand she has um, Life in her right hand and in left hand, riches and honor. She has everything. She has life, she has um, riches, she has honor. So show interest in wisdom. Right? And education will help you to a great extent. As Bishop rightly said, education plus the blessings of God. That will uh, fetch you wisdom. And what is the advantage? It is better than silver. Knowledge, wisdom is better than silver. 
better than gold and better than precious than all jewels all jewels it the the, the you know the result cannot be compared with anything anything that is the importance of education and you are in classes 8 9 uh, 10 11 i hope so so you must be uh, more interested in education because education is the greatest capital that you can have a student from a very ordinary family any ordinary family can go to any level any extent through education right you know about our apj abdul kalam what he was doing in uh, rameshwaram and where he entered a very ordinary boy from very ordinary family but then he became the president of the country so you can you can try in your own ways and become something no doubt about it. so the point that i want to highlight is this you must be more interested in education because the result that you gain from education which the is more precious than gold silver and jewels it will bring you honor it will bring you riches in order to realize the csi students about the worth of education the ecological department is conducting a program like this so be more interested in education and through education you must be able to attain your goal and reach very very high positions in your life so that is uh, for the day if you want to ask me some questions you are free to ask me or maybe dr matiko she can intervene so dear students if you have any questions you can ask okay we want you to ask then only you will grow so you have to ask questions and you can tell your opinion how to overcome distractions sir chat box yeah how to overcome distractions very good that's a question um, i didn't get the name it's a very good question there will be you are you are living a life a distracted life because there are a lot of attractions and temptations around you are living in a very beautiful world very beautiful very tempting world lot to see lot to hear and then you can see everything you can hear everything and lead a very leisurely life no problem but i would say that it must be your goal it must be your goal centered life that will give you that should give you the power to stay away from distractions your goal centered life must charge you positively so that you will stay away from distractions okay that very good question uh, one one by one how to overcome our failures sir yes there will be failures no doubt there will be failures at any point of time there will be failures number one what to do what to learn number one is there anything to learn from my failure if there is something to learn from the failure learn it right what is my role in this failure think about it what's my role in this failure did i fail because of me did i fail because of my responsibility did i fail because of the people around me what is the reason for this failure you analyze the reason and then if there is something to learn from that you learn it and then begin a new life so analyze understand and then begin a new life very good question okay yeah how can we succeed in our studies uh maybe uh, you, you will get uh, maybe two three sessions about that later so i don't want to uh, tell you that now because that that's a full on session but only thing is that how to succeed in our studies means 
the first thing is that you must be i i've been telling you about that you must be interested in your studies don't study for your parents don't study for your teachers don't study for anybody it is boring it's boring but study for yourself right study for yourself don't try don't study for the exam don't study for the teachers don't study for the parents don't study for anybody but then study for yourself because that is the greatest weapon that you have which is freely available to you use it hmm? use it you will become successful yeah how to understand my capability okay that's a very good question even i had doubts about it am i a competent person um am i an able person do you have any talents or abilities or whatever nothing what to do hmm? nothing at all so i asked the same question to my teacher hmm? when the teacher came for engaging a session like this i asked the same question that was low years back years back i was a very tall guy in those days hmm? throughout my life you know, i was a tall guy a chubby guy also. so people used to laugh at me Hmm? a chubby guy a chubby guy long fellow right and then i was looking down upon myself down upon myself because you know i am not a talented guy i am not an intelligent guy um i am a chubby guy i am a long fellow what to do but the teacher told me a very interesting answer rubble if you can strengthen yourself with some talents if we can strengthen yourself with talent some talent that you have to identify in you you can stand above others because you are tall right so strengthen yourself with your talent then i try to prove what is there in me what is there in me i was having confidence because i was the class monitor and through that you know i have gained some confidence so using that confidence using that confidence and counting on the confidence i started getting involved in various various activities whenever a chance was given to the students of my class the first hand to come up was global chat the first hand so i built upon my confidence that was the only talent that i possessed in those days only ability i possess in those things the rest is history so identify your strong area build upon that strengthen it very good there are so many questions are coming i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there are sessions at the time coming. time 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 how much time left yeah five minutes more okay no problem yeah stress relief it's a very important problem for students stress it's a matter of concern for them. but i am of the opinion that there must be some stress we call it controllable stress we call it promoting stress you have the university exam the board exam coming and then you don't study at all you need to have some stress which promotes you encourages you some stress is needed we call it positive stress it is needed we can't avoid that it has to be there it has to be there. you need to do your work and there is a time limit there must be some stress positive stress so that you will finish it off somebody has told me that i must prepare an article and give it to him on this 10 december 10 so december 10 is the ultimatum date and then i have started searching for material there is some stress that the positive stress but there are negative stress also which kills you which kills you the problem comes when the problem is that you don't prepare well there is stress hmm? when you are not preparing well there is stress when you are not making maximum use of your abilities and talents there is stress that's why i told you in the beginning itself make maximum use of your ability intelligence intelligence 
maximum use. Okay? And there, there are some exercises. I am sure that there will be sessions on uh, stress management and topics like that. And they'll teach you more about this. So we'll go for the last question. Last one. Okay, uh, nothing is coming out. Yeah, we will call it today. I thank uh, all my very, very dear students for your very patient listening. Very patient listening. I hope you have learned something from my class. You might have noted it down. Maybe I'll come later in some other session also. I'll come and I'll teach you something, uh, a different topic later. So make use of the points that you have gathered from my class. Make use of it. One second, I thank yeah, uh, Matthew Koshi for giving me this kind of an opportunity. I pray to God Almighty so that his blessings will be upon you so that you will become the shining star for CSI Church in the days ahead. Thank you. Jai. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring and motivation class. And on behalf of CSA Senate Department of Ecology Concerns, I extend a warm gratitude to you. Next class onwards, the students are welcoming and proposing water thanks, and they are doing the opening prayer and they are concluding prayer. So this is their orientation class. So we are dealing all the topics you mentioned in the chat, chat box in the next class onwards. So we are concluding this session. Thank you very much. And we will meet next Wednesday.